in the headlines. Buhari signs 983 billion Naira supplementary budget for 2021. Boko Haram ISWAP releases photos of abducted soldiers and protocol officers. Plus, China urges U.S. to invite World Health Organization experts to investigate Fort Detrick Club. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Ayubelia. Thank you for joining. For more news and latest updates, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all our social media platforms. The news in details now. President Muhammadu Buhari has signed the 2021 Supplementary Appropriation Bill of 983 billion Naira into law. The Senior Special Assistant to the President on National Assembly Matters, Umar El Yaqub, made the disclosure to newsmen. The signed supplementary budget, which totaled 983 billion naira, will be largely used on funding security and health concerns. Meanwhile, the federal government has urged landlords of private properties to start charging their tenants monthly, quarterly or half-year rents instead of current practice of charging one, two or three years of advance rents. Works and Housing Minister Babatunde Fashala said this at the opening ceremony of the 15th Abuja Housing Show. It noted that in the post-COVID-19 era, most tenants are owing rents or facing eviction. The government said it was evident that most houses available for sale or rent belong mostly to individuals and private companies compared to those the state or the federal government could provide. In a similar vein, the federal government has called for the support of Nigeria's development partners through their high commissions and embassies to strengthen the implementation of programs to protect the environment. Minister of Environment Dr. Muhammad Abubakar made the call on Monday at the inauguration of the Nigeria's National Reduced Emission Deforestation and Forest Degradation Plus Strategy document in Abuja. are suffering from the effect of climate change today that we are committed to protecting and improving our own natural environment for the benefit of Nigerians while also combating global climate change and that we are eager to partner with others in supporting this effort. Nigeria is willing to raise the ambitions in this area but cannot do so without international support and collaboration, for which the UK government should be able to provide and or deploy its network in making this happen. Shubham Chaudhuri, Country Director for Nigeria World Bank, said that the strategy document will enhance efforts to address environmental challenges, especially climate change in the country. for Nigeria's uh, fight against global uh, climate change and a substantial contribution of Nigeria to the global uh, agenda for uh, mitigation. Uh, also a great opportunity to initiate new uh, access to carbon finance for uh, Nigeria. In her remark at the event, Minister of Women Affairs and Youth Development, Pauline Tallinn, said her ministry will participate in and support the implementation of REDD programs. The project aims at promoting LPG National Cooking Gas Project of the Federal Government of Nigeria, create awareness and sensitize rural populations, especially rural communities, on the effects of fuel, woods, or health and the environment, stimulate the use of clean cookstoves that comply with emotion, rates as recommended by the World Health Organization to help reduce drudgery and households air pollution and deaths. Now the travails of suspended chairman of Kano State Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Commission, Mui Magaji Rimengado, is gathering mixed feelings following recommendation of his sack by the State House of Assembly on Monday. Mui had secured a court order stopping his investigation by the State Assembly pending determination of a suit he instituted against the probe. Abu Bakr Abdul Latif Joss, a Kano-based publisher of Soleil's Base, an online medium, has in an interview 
shed more light on the controversies involving the suspended chairman. Briefly, we just want to get your thoughts and your opinion on the recent controversy uh, between the Kano State House of Assembly and the suspended chairman of the anti-corruption body there in the state. There is a court injunction regarding the investigation by the State Assembly to hold on uh, pending uh, the outcome of court hearing. However, we are also uh, seeing that the State Assembly is still moving on uh, you know, with their investigation. Let's get your reaction on all of that. Thank you very much for having me on. What really happened yesterday was, was so sad because uh, like uh, on Friday, or rather all along since uh, July 5th, the State House of Assembly suspended the anti-graft chairman, Mohima Gajiri Mengadu, based on a petition written by the Accountant General of the State. That was on the 5th of uh, July. But incidentally, the next day, the House came back and realized that it doesn't have the power to even suspend the chairman, but rather made a resolution for the governor to effect that. So quickly, the House now uh, made, uh, did a made shift. They wrote to the chairman that uh, the chairman of the commission, the suspended chairman, should appear before it on 14th of July. On 14th of July, I think the, the, the chairman couldn't make it because we were at the assembly that day. So he sent out his lawyer who brought in a, a letter. Moving on now to security matters. Boko Haram ISOP terrorists have released pictures of the two soldiers and you realize an officer they abducted on Damaturu Maiduguri Highway on Saturday. The insurgents also released the identity cards of the abductees. In the display of the ID cards, two of the cards belong to May Lali, one for Mustafa, while the other belongs to a Dirang. Adedotu of the Nigerian Army. The ID card of the fourth abductee was not cited from the list of the cards provided by the insurgents. On political matters, governors elected on the platform of the People's Democratic Party have called on the federal government to end the activities of bandits, terrorists and kidnappers terrorizing residents in parts of the country. They made the call on Monday at the meeting of the PDP Governor's Forum held in Bochi State, where they deliberated on the state of the nation and reviewed the state of the nation's democracy, economy and security. On the economy, the governors admonished the All Progressives Congress-led federal government to collaborate more with state governments to stem the unemployment scourge affecting the youths. You're watching Trust TV News update and coming up after the break. U.S. report says 305,000 Nigerians are refugees. Details and more coming shortly. Join us again. Get latest updates on current topical issues and breaking news by downloading the Trust TV mobile app on your Android devices. Go online, click Google Play Store, search Trust TV, install the app and get doses of unfiltered information on happenings all over the world in your pocket. Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Nigerian story. My name is Samuel Dada. Yakubu Isa. And I'm going to be the Gigi. And you're the Musa. It's time to come on. I want to have a good day. I'm going to have a good day. Looking for private jobs, sometimes you get employed and the process of payment, you know, you undergo some kind of stress.
Thanks for staying with us. Now here is another look at some of our top stories. President Muhammadu Buhari has signed the 2021 Supplementary Appropriation Bill of 983 billion Naira into law. Plus, Boko Haram ISOP terrorists have released pictures of the two soldiers and Yobe liaison officer they abducted on Damaturu Meduguri Highway on Saturday. Still ahead, Islamic movement in Nigeria, also known as Shiite movement, says government has failed to establish any criminal case against its leader, Sheikh Ibrahim El Zazaki. The movement therefore said it is patiently waiting for new charges against El Zazaki and his wife. The group said this at a press briefing in Kaduna where its spokesperson, Mohammed Gamawa, said Sheikh Zazaki is prosecuted because he belongs to the Shiite sect. For you to tell our brothers in Nigeria, to tell them, to tell the whole world that Malam Zazaki is being persecuted simply because he is a Shiite. No case was established against him. The court of competent jurisdiction in Abuja discharged Malam three, um, three years back. But the government, a democratic government that's supposed to respect the law, refused to release him. They arrested, they, they refused to release him and they found no excuse in holding him. So they framed some bogus charges and brought him to Kaduna. This week, by the grace of God, we are going to see the end to that case. We believe that Malam is innocent. Malam did not commit any offense. Malam is a person that called us to respect the rule of law in Nigeria. Meanwhile, a Kaduna-based Christian cleric, Pastor Johanna Buru, joined the group to demand for justice in the Elza Zaki's case. We want to see them demonstrating to the street if there's justice. So let justice be done by this company called, so that we will have a little size of promoting peace. They shouldn't make it more bogus for us. The work is tedious. We want to be free anywhere we are going. We want our sons and daughters to have future. If these things continue, not everybody have a heart of patience, perseverance, and long suffering to the end. That is why I'm here to say we are pleading from the end of peace to the end of justice. Let there be justice. That is my call to federal, to state government, to the judiciary, and what of you. The trial of the Shiites leader at the Kaduna State High Court is adjourned to the 28th of July for hearing. Also, the trial of the leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu, resumed at the Federal High Court Abuja on Monday without Kanu's presence in court. The presiding judge, Justice Binta Nyako of the Federal High Court, stated that the trial cannot continue in the absence of the IPOB leader since he was not available to stand his trial. Trust TV's Aisha Salihu was at the Federal High Court and reports. We are here at the Federal High Court of Abuja to witness the resumed hearing of the case between the federal government and the leader of the proscribed group, indigenous people of Biafra, Namde Kanu, who is facing charges of terrorism, treasonable felony, uh, illegal possession of firearms, and managing an unlawful society, amongst others. After hours of struggle by some journalists and legal practitioners to gain access into the Federal High Court premises, the presiding judge resumed hearing of the case, but Namdi Kanu was not produced as the Department of State Services said his absence was due to logistic reasons. Meanwhile, the counsel representing Ohaneze and Debo, Godi Wazurike, expressed disappointment at the federal government's inability through the DSS to provide Namdi Kanu. Under the rule of law, he must be brought to court. And the reason given by the prosecution is actually questionable. They said it's a problem of logistics. In simple language, the DSS said they didn't have a vehicle to bring him. As far as I understand the word logistics, and it did not make sense. So the court did not handle the matter today because he cannot have a trial in that sense of the suspects. And my name, the can is being treated like a criminal. He's not a criminal, he's only a suspect. And it's only a court that must pronounce that word criminal. 
Everybody's resume be innocent once you found guilty. In a related development, Chukwemeka is a Ife had this to say. We waited for three hours before the judge came in. And at no time did we see Nandika. I think we are very, very disappointed. That's the minimum way to say it. Justice Bin Tanyako of the Federal High Court said Namdi Kanu is to remain in the custody of the Department of State Services despite a request to transfer him to Kujie Correctional Center. But the Nigerian government has promised to grant him a fair trial. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. Moving on now to public health matters. Nigeria has confirmed 213 new cases of coronavirus in various parts of the country says the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. It disclosed this in its latest update on the outbreak, saying the new cases were reported in 12 states on Monday. Two new deaths were also recorded. Now, an American State Department report has put the number of Nigerian refugees in other countries at approximately 305,000 with over 2.1 million in internally displaced persons comes across the country. The report also alleged that those it classified as illicit recruiters, including family members, community members and pastors, are increasingly targeting individuals seeking to travel by air to the Middle East where wealthy individuals and other actors exploit them in forced labor or commercial sex. It listed Abia, Delta, Ebony, Edo, Imo, and Kogi State as common origins for trafficking of victims to West Africa and Europe. The Nigeria Port Authority says it is expecting 21 ships laden with petroleum products, food items, and others from July 27 to August 5. The NPA made this known in its publication Shipping Position a copy of which was made available to newsmen in Lagos on Tuesday. The publication said that the ships contained bulk meat, wheat, general cargo, frozen fish, container, trucks, bulk sugar, bulk salt, petrol, bulk gypsum, palmitic palm fatty acid, and soya bean oil. NPA reports that another eight ships had arrived at the ports, waiting to berth with container, frozen fish, general cargo, petrol, and ethanol. On the foreign scene, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson has urged the United States to invite World Health Organization experts to investigate the Fort Detrick lab for coronavirus origin tracing as soon as possible. According to Zhao Lijiang, some people in the United States are bent on political manipulation under the pretext of virus origin tracing to divert attention and shift blame for a poor performance in their pandemic response. The United States is facing a resurgence of new COVID-19 infections nationwide due to the rise of the more contagious Delta variant fueled by misinformation about the virus and politicization of the nation's response to the pandemic. The United States is facing a resurgence of new COVID-19 infections nationwide due to the rise of the more contagious Delta variant fueled by misinformation about vaccines and politicization of the nation's response to the pandemic. A latest CDC weekly report said, quote, COVID-19 cases are on the rise in nearly 90% of U.S. jurisdictions, and we are seeing outbreaks in parts of the country that have low vaccination coverage. According to the CDC, as of July 22nd, 35% of U.S. counties were experiencing high levels of community transmission. Health experts blame the recent surges on the low vaccination rates and the accelerating Delta variant transmission. The U.S. is going in the wrong direction on the pandemic, with about half of Americans not yet vaccinated and Delta variant accounting for more than 80% of COVID-19 cases in the country. Ward Anthony Fauci, the country's top infectious disease expert on Sunday. America is one of the few countries with enough vaccines at its disposal to protect every resident, and yet it has the highest rates of vaccine hesitance or refusal of any nation except Russia, noted a recent story by the New York Times. 
Misinformation regarding the virus and vaccines, which is spreading across social media platforms, has also undercut President Joe Biden's push to get more people vaccinated. Millions of Americans are refusing to get the vaccine for fears of side effects or other worries, many of which are posted on social media. Moreover, the stark partisan divide on COVID-19 vaccinations has also resulted in a growing gap in vaccination rates between counties that voted for Biden in 2020 and those that supported Donald Trump. A Washington Post ABC News poll released earlier this month found 47% of Republican respondents saying they were unlikely to get vaccinated, compared with 6% of Democrats. Among Republicans, 38% said they definitely would not get the shots. The pandemic has killed over 611,000 people in the U.S. as of Monday, according to data compiled by Johns Hopkins University. Now, finally, in sports news, despite within the first and fourth quarters against the United States in their group opener at the ongoing Tokyo Olympics, Nigeria's female basketball team were defeated. 72-81 by the Americans early Tuesday morning. The opening group game was a rematch from just a week ago when these two teams faced off in the, an exhibition match in the build-up to the Olympics in Las Vegas. During that game, Team USA routed the Nigerian ladies 93-62, but it was a different clash in Tokyo where the Tigers gave the Americans a huge scare. And that wraps up Trust News Update. Kindly click the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and follow us on all our social media handles for more updates. I am Ayubelia. Thank you for watching.